Hey, what's going on guys? So in my opinion, every web developer should learn CSS Grid, at least if you're working in the front end. And in this CSS Grid crash course, we're gonna break it into a couple different parts. So first we're gonna look at some slides, just talk about what CSS Grid is. We'll compare it a little bit to Flexbox. Then we're gonna jump into a sandbox where we look at all the different CSS properties that we can use on grid containers and grid items, learn how to span rows and columns and things like that. And then finally, we're gonna build a small project, which is gonna be a testimonial landing page. All right, so I think that this will give you uh, a lot of foundational knowledge in creating layouts with the grid. So hopefully you enjoy it and let's get into it. This grid crash course is sponsored by InMotion Hosting and I've used InMotion personally for years. In fact, my traversymedia.com website is hosted on one of their VPSs. So they offer everything from shared hosting and WordPress hosting for small businesses to VPSs and dedicated servers. And I can speak from experience that their service is fast, secure and reliable and great for just about any project. So you have accounts starting from just $2.99 per month, and that includes not only web hosting, but email accounts, marketing tools, free SSLs, and more. So to learn more, visit InMotionHosting.com or click the link in the description below. All right, guys, so I just want to jump into some slides real quick to talk a little bit about what CSS Grid is. So the Grid is a powerful tool that CSS gives us to easily align elements or items on the page, create two-dimensional layouts with rows and columns. And I do want to mention Flexbox here because they can be similar. They are used a lot in, in similar ways. And a lot of people ask me which one they should learn or if sh they should learn both. And my answer is always to learn both. Now, Flexbox was created first. It has a bit more browser compatibility, but if you're using modern browsers, you're not gonna have any issues with either of these. Now, it's gonna come down to preference on where and when you use Grid or Flexbox. So I can just tell you what I do. So what I do is I use CSS Grid for the overall layout of a website or a user interface. So laying out headers and cards and all that stuff. And then if there's inner elements that need to be aligned, that's where I'll use Flexbox. So I may have uh, a layout of cards that I use with, you know, I'll use CSS Grid. And then if there is maybe a header in the card with the title of a blog post or a testimonial or something, and then maybe a picture of the person, the date, that's where I'll use Flexbox is to align those inner elements. All right, so that's just what I do. But again, it's going to be preference. I do know some developers that only use Flexbox and don't even use CSS Grid unless, you know, they have to for uh, an existing project. But again, it's going to it's going to come down to pre uh, breakfast. It's going to come down to preference. So with the grid, we have just like with Flex, we have containers and items. So we have, uh, you know, an, uh, an element that's going to be your container and then any direct children of that element will be your items. And we create a grid just like we create a flex box and that's using the display property. And then we have specific properties that are available on the grid container and then specific properties on the uh, on the grid items. And we're going to get into all of these within our in our sandbox part of the of this crash course. All right, so with Flexbox, you have the ability to create one dimensional layouts with either a row or a column. So, you know, you use flex direction, set it to row or column. But with CSS Grid, it's, it's a little more powerful where we can create two dimensional layouts and we can use rows and columns in the same grid. And then we also have the, the ability to span certain rows or a certain number of rows and columns. And it's just, it, I, to me, it's a better option to, especially for um, more sophisticated website layouts and, and user interfaces. But we'll get into all that later on. All right, so enough with the slides. Let's go ahead and jump into VS Code and let's start to learn CSS Grid. Okay, so I have VS Code open. Of course, you can use whatever text editor you want. And I have a grid.html and a grid.css file. That's it, and they're both completely blank. So we're gonna basically go through and learn all the different properties that the grid gives us and how to size things, how to create columns and rows and span items across multiple columns and rows and so on. 
So we'll start off with the HTML, which is going to be really simple. So just exclamation enter will give us a template in with using VS Code and Emmet and title. I'll just say CSS grid crash course. And then we want to bring in the CSS file. So that's called grid dot CSS. And then the body is actually going to be really, really simple. So we're going to have a container that's going to be our grid container. And if you're familiar with Flexbox, it's kind of the same thing. You have your container that you have specific properties that you can use with the grid. And then you have your grid items inside and you have specific properties on those as well. All right. So in this container, I want to have nine divs. They can be anything it can be divs, images, headings, anything at all could be a grid item. But we're going to do nine divs with the class of items. So I'm going to say dot item and then I'll add some text. I'll say item and then whatever the current number is. And let's times that by nine and we get nine divs with the class of items. So I'm going to save that and then open that up with live server. Of course, you don't have to use live server, but I, I am. All right. So now we just see item one through nine. So we can go over to our CSS and I just have some some base CSS that I want to add. Okay, so basically here we just have a reset. We have some body styling font and so on um, the container. I put a max width of 960. Of course, you could make that whatever you want. Margin 100 pixels on the top and bottom and auto on the left and right. So you can see there's a, a 960 pixel container here and that's going to be our grid container and then just some padding. So these items, I don't want to just use text. Uh, so I'm going to basically turn them into just blue boxes so we can clearly see our items. So let's say dot item and let's set the background. Uh, of course, you can use whatever color you want. I'm going to use steel blue and then let's do color of white for the text and let's do a font size of 20 pixels and let's say padding. We'll do 20 pixels. Okay, let's actually add a border as well. So we'll say border. Let's do sky blue and one pixel solid just so we can see where these end and begin. So we just have three, uh, three. We have nine blocks or nine items. Now to make this container a grid container, just like with Flexbox, we use the display property, right? So if we said display flex, it would put it into a flex row. We can see that immediately. Now, if we say display grid, it doesn't do anything. We can't see anything happen just yet because we need to specify how many columns we want and how how big we want those columns to be. So the first grid property we're going to look at is grid template columns. So the way this works is we set some sizes so I can say, for instance, the first column 100 pixels, second 200 pixels. If I save that, I'm going to get two columns, first 100, second 200. If I wanted a third column of 300 pixels, I could go ahead and do that as well. Now, and it doesn't have to be just pixels. I could use percentages. So if I do 30%, 40%, 30% and save that. You can see now we have percentages, but most commonly you're going to be using fractions. So if I do one FR and one FR, these are fractional units, and this is just going to give me two columns that are the exact same width. If I make this browser wider, you'll see it's going to, it's just going to take up the entire width of whatever the container is which in this case is 960. But of course, I could change that to 1160 and make it bigger. I could change it to 660 and make it smaller. So whatever the whatever the width of that container is. All right. Now I could, of course, add more here and I can make I can make certain columns bigger. So if I want to do two FR here now, you'll see that the third column is bigger than the first two. If I want to make the middle one three FR, then that one's going to be bigger. All right. Now I actually want to have three of the same. So I could do one FR three times or I could use the repeat function and just say repeat three times one FR. And if I save that, you'll see it'll give me the same result as if I did one FR three times. Now, when it comes to spacing between these items, between the columns and rows, we could add margin and then say like 10 pixels onto the item itself, which is probably what you would do with Flexbox. But with grid, we have some extra properties we can use on the container, such as column gap. So I'll say column gap 10 pixels and you'll see that will add space 
going vertically between the columns. And then we also have row gap, which you can probably guess what that does. It adds a space between rows. Now, if you want to use both of these instead of using two properties, we could just go ahead and do gap and we'll set that. We'll do 10 pixels and you'll see that it gives us the, the same exact result. All right. So we know how to divide the items up into columns and we know how to make columns certain widths. So now let's talk about height. So the height right now is going by the content that's in each each grid item and it's all basically the same content. So they're all the same size. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace this with, let's say, Larm 30 and save that. And now notice that the height expands to fit the content by default. And then all of the columns that are in that row also expand on height by default. So there's a couple properties that I want to show you that have to do with with rows and height. So the first one is grid dash auto dash rows. So with this, we could set all of them to 200 pixels, regardless of the content. You can see it actually gets cut off here. Um, now, there's also a function called min max that we can use on both columns and rows. So let's say min max. And as you can see, it defines a size range greater than or equal to min and less than or equal to max. So basically it takes in a minimum. We'll do 100 pixels and then max will just do auto. So now we can see all of the content that's set to auto and then these other ones are going to be set to 100. If we want those set to 200, then we could do that. All right. Now, just like we have this grid template columns, we also have grid template rows. So that's what I want to look at next. So let's say grid template rows and we could use pixels or percentages or fractions. For now, let's just say like 200 pixels, 100 pixel. 200 pixels and it's just like grid template columns, except instead of going this way, it goes this way. So we have 200 pixels, 100 and 200. All right. And you can also use like we could say repeat. We could say repeat three times one FR save. And now by default, the height is going to be of whichever the, the most content. So if I were to come over here and slash this in half, and save, then that's going to resize the height of all of these. So I, I don't find myself using grid template rows that much because most of the layouts that I build, just the, the content determines the height and then I'll align things with the alignment uh, properties that I'll show you in a minute. But it's good to know uh, how these work. So I'm just going to comment all that out and let's uh, Let's move this up here. I just I just want to have this. I'll probably create a repository so you guys can have this as kind of a reference. So let's see what do we want to look at next. Let's look at let's look at some of the alignment properties, which if you know Flexbox, you probably already know. So align items, justify content and so on. Now, before we do that, I do want to show you that in the Google Chrome Dev Tools and Firefox Dev Tools, I'm not sure about the other browsers. I don't use anything else. If you have a grid container, as we have here, you have this little grid button. And if I click that, you'll see we get this highlighting and you can also get these numbers. Now, if you don't see the numbers, you can just go down to layout and under grid. Just choose show line numbers. You can also show the track sizes. So here you'll see like one FR and the, the number of pixels and here as well. But I don't want to keep those displayed, so I'm going to uncheck that. But I do want to keep the numbers because when I show you how to span across rows and columns, these numbers really come in handy. So let's see, I want to start off with align items. So let's go. Uh, we'll just go here and let's say align items. Now the default for this is stretch. Okay, if I save that, we're not going to see any difference. And what that does is is this right here. It stretches uh, go uh, according to whichever one has the most content. Now you might not want that. So we could set this to let's say start. All right. So what that's going to do is align it to the top here. Okay. If I want to align it to the center, I could do that. If I want to align it to the end, I could do that as well. All right. And and this will take effect if any of these are have have height to them. Like if I 
if I go ahead and um, uncomment this grid auto rows, you'll see now they're all aligned to the bottom. But I'm going to just make sure I comment that back. So as far as uh, justify content, in order for us to really see how that works, we can't have the, the, the content taking up this whole space. So just temporarily, I'm going to set, let's say, repeat three 100 pixels. All right, so now we have three 100 pixel rows, or sorry, columns. And if I wanted to align all of these, let's say to the end, I could use justify content and set that to end and it would move them over to the end. I could do center, move them to the center and so on. We could do also like space around, you know, so th all those different values. Uh, and if you're familiar with Flexbox, then you already know those. So let's set this back to one FR. And now you can also align self, meaning on the item itself. So I don't have specific classes like item one, item two, item three to, to grab these. But of course, we could use pseudo selectors. So I want to grab the second item. So what I would do is item colon and then we could use nth of type. And then I'm going to pass in two. So that will select the second one. And I'm just going to change the height just temporarily just to show you how this works. The height and uh, weight, <laughs> the height and width to 100 pixels. Okay. and now if I want to align this, let's say align item, I'm sorry, not align items. Align items is for the container. Align self is for the actual item. So I want to align that to, let's say, end. And you'll see that it gets moved to the bottom. If I want to move it to center, I could do that. And then if I want to move it along along the X axis, I could do justify self. And let's say we want that to be center. All right. So I'm not going to keep this. I just wanted to show you that that is uh, those those properties are available. So the next thing I want to move to is spanning items across uh, a number of rows or columns. So I'm going to start with this, the first one here. So I'm going to change this two to a one that's going to select this first one. And we'll just go ahead and change the, the color. We'll change it to black. And let's say that I want this to span from line one. So these are grid line numbers from one to three instead of just one to two, which is the default. So I could do grid dash column dash start and set that to one, which is where it is currently. But then I want grid column end. I want that to be three instead of two. If I put it to two and save, it's the same thing. But if I put it to three, it's now going to stretch over to column three. All right. So or sh I should say line three. Now, there's a, a quicker way to do this. Instead of doing start and end, you can simply say grid column and then we can just do one and then slash three like that. And then we can actually get rid of this. And that will do the same thing. Another way we could do it is we could say grid dash column uh, column and we could say one and then do slash span two. So instead of just specifically saying we want it to go from one to three, we could say start at one and then span two. So if I comment that out and save, we should see the same same result. But I prefer to do it this way and explicitly say where it starts and ends. Now we can also span rows or span down. So let's say item three here, which right now is goes from two to three. Let's say we want it to go from two to four. So I'll just go ahead and grab this and let's select item three and we'll change the color, lighten it up a little bit. And then instead of a grid column, we're going to do grid row. And it starts at two, so we're going to say two, and we want that to go now to four. So it's going to go from here two to four. All right, so we'll save that, and now you can see that that spans from two to four. Now let's do the same thing with item four. So I'm just going to grab that, and then we'll say this is going to be four, and we'll just keep the same color. And then grid row is going to do the same thing. We want it to go from two to four. So we'll save that. 
So you can see that CSS Grid, it is more, more powerful than Flexbox. It's two dimensional, like there's no way to do something like this in Flexbox, have these two here and this, unless you use multiple Flexboxes. This is all one grid. Um, so now what I'm going to do is turn off the grid lines here. Let's shut those off. And then let's comment out this stuff here where we did all the spans. So we just have three, um, three columns across. And I'm actually going to just change this back to item one. All right, because now I want to talk about responsiveness. So right now, no matter how how the browser is sized, we have three columns, right? And that's probably not what you what you want. So what I usually do is just create media queries and just have them stack on uh, on smaller screens. So, for example, I come down here and say at media. And we can do max. We'll say max with 500 pixels. And then we can set the uh, let's take the container and let's set the grid template columns to just simply one FR. So now if we take the browser and we we resize it down to 500 pixels, then you can see they all stack. All right. So we can do that now if you want these to and of course you can set other media queries and you might set it to to one FR one FR or use repeat to one FR for maybe 768 or something like that. But you can also make these uh, make these wrap like with Flexbox, you have flex wrap. So to give you an example of that, we'll go up here and let's copy this grid template columns down and then comment it out. So what we could do is pass in here, let's say auto dash fill. And then instead of just one FR, because if we do it like that, we're just going to get that result. So instead of that, we can do we can use min max here. And we want to pass in here whatever the minimum width you want. So let's say 200 pixels, for example, and then we could do one FR here. So now what happens is we get th three across because we're saying if it's 200 pixels, then put it in. But if we go below that, so let's see, we're going to go keep going. And as soon as one of these goes below 200 pixels, then it wraps. And now we have two columns. OK, and then we still have our media query. So if I keep going and I hit 500, then they're going to stack. If I stretch it out long enough, we should see four columns as well. All right, so that's how you can make your grids responsive. Now, obviously, if you're going to keep like the grid the spans like this, then you have to account for those in your in your media queries as well. All right, so th that's pretty much it for for the basics and, and how to use the grid. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you before we move on to the little project they have, and that is uh, grid template areas, which is kind of a different way of, of doing things. So I think what I'll do is just create two more files, Let's say grid two dot HTML. Uh, and then we'll say we'll do grid, let's say grid two dot CSS. All right. And I'm going to just close up grid HTML and grid CSS. So we have the two new files and then let's go to grid two dot HTML, which is completely blank right now. So I just want to show you a picture of what I'm whoops. I don't want to open it in Photoshop. Let's open it uh, with preview. So this is the layout that I want to create, which is a pretty common type of layout. So we have a header at the top that goes all the way across, have some navigation on the side that goes all the way down under the header, the content and then the sidebar and then the footer that goes under the sidebar and the content. So I'm going to show you how to do this with grid templates or grid template areas. So first thing. Let's add our HTML, which is going to be really simple. We'll just throw in a template here and let's say CSS. CSS grid template areas. And let's add in a link here and this is going to go to grid 2 dot CSS. Now, 
um, in this case, I'm going to use the body as our as our grid, as our grid container, and then any direct elements are going to be grid items. So first we'll have a header and I'm just going to put some text in here. So you have header, we'll have a main tag and here we'll say content, then we'll have our nav, say navigation and oops, let's do an aside. So that'll be our sidebar and then what else our footer which will be footer. All right. So that's all I want to have and I want to turn this into this using grid template areas. So let's go into our I'll get this out of the way now. Let's go into our CSS and there's some just basic CSS I'm going to pass in here. So just a reset some body sizing uh, and then let's make the wait a minute. There we go. So let's make the body the grid. Actually before we do that Let's take all the elements and let's make turn them into blue boxes. So we'll say header, footer, main, side and nav. And let's do background color and we'll do steel blue. Let's do color. We'll set that to white and then padding 20 pixels and let's do border. We'll do sky blue, one pixel solid. All right. So we have no positioning or anything like that. We just have a bunch of blue blocks, just like we did uh, in the last, you know, in the last file. So, like I said, the body is going to be the grid. So we'll say display grid, which does right now it, it the reason that it did this is because I set the height of the body to 100 VH. If I didn't do that, it wouldn't stretch. It wouldn't stretch like that. But I do want it to take up the entire viewport height. Now for the grid areas, let's go ahead and say grid dash template areas. The way we do this is a, is a little weird, but I think it's it's cool because it's like a It's like a physical representation of what we're trying to do. So the first row, let me bring back over our image so you, you can see exactly what we're doing. So the first row is going to be the header. Now, in total, this there's, there's three columns, right? One, two, three. The header we want to span all three. So the first row, let's say header, header, header three times. Now, the second one, let's put in some quotes here. We want our nav. We want our content. Now, these words that I'm putting in here, these are going to be the grid areas. It doesn't have to be called header. We could call this anything, but I'm just being specific. So nav, then we'll do our content. And then let's say sidebar. Okay, so that's the second. And then the third row is going to be the nav again, because here the nav is going all the way down, right? And then the footer I want under those two. So I would say footer and footer. So this is is like a text representation of how we want our layout. Okay, and hopefully that makes sense. Header, we want to go all the way across the three columns. So we have it three times. We have the nav content sidebar and then we have the nav footer footer. All right, so let's get that out of there. Now, just saving this. It's not going to do anything except put them in side by side. What we need to do now is create our grid areas. So we want to use our selectors. So we want the header tag and then we're going to set that grid area using the grid area property and we're going to set it to header. Now what I put here, this header pertains to this. Okay, so this could be anything. I could have Brad three times here and then just have Brad here. All right. As long as I'm using the correct selector. So let's save that. And now you see the header goes all the way across. All right. So the next thing is let's do the nav. So we'll say nav and set that to the grid area of nav because that's what I called it. So now the navigation is going all the way down. So next we have what did I We have the main tag and I believe the grid area I called content. So let's say grid area content. Not much difference there. And then the sidebar, 
So we'll grab that with a side and we'll say the grid dash area is going to be sidebar. And then finally the footer. And we want to set the grid area to footer. All right, so we'll save that and now you can see it's very similar to what I have here, right? It's just the sizing. The positioning is all correct. Now, if I wanted the footer to go all the way across here and have the navigation end here along with these content sidebar, I could just change this template area up here and instead of nav, I could say footer and save and now you can see the footer goes all the way across. All right, but I'm going to put that back to nav. Now, as far as the the sizing, the width and the height, we can still use our grid template columns and grid template rows. So let's say grid dash template columns and I'm going to set it to 1 fr and then the middle, the con main content that should probably be the widest, right? So we'll do 4 fr and then the sidebar will do 1 fr. Okay, we'll save that. Now you can see the content is the biggest part. Now we also don't want the header and footer to be this tall. So let's use grid dash template dash rows here. And let's set the header will do 80 pixels and then let's just do 1 fr will which is just basically the remaining area from the header and then the footer which I'll do 70 pixels. Okay, so now if I bring my image over, there we go. Same exact thing. Okay, so I think it's really cool that we can lay things out like this. Now you won't always use this. I I don't use this a lot. Um but if I'm if I were to create something like this, I definitely would. And I've been, you know, I've been doing web development for quite a while and those of you that that have been too, You might remember when we did not layouts like this with tables, like we would actually use HTML tables and style them to look like this. And then doing it with floats and having the sidebar go all the way like a color background color go all the way down. It was just a pain in the ass. So the fact that we have this kind of thing now, it's just I mean, newer people just <laughs> you don't know how good you have it really uh, when it comes to this this kind of thing. But I think that's pretty much it as far as as the properties that I wanted to show you. So now let's get into uh, to creating our little project. Okay, so we're going to get into our project now. The layout that we're going to build is it comes from the frontendmentor.io website, which is a really cool challenge website where you can build HTML, CSS, and JavaScript projects. And there's some premium options, but there's also a ton of free layouts here. So the one that we want to create is let's see it's the testimonials right here. So testimonials grid section and you can actually start the challenge and you can download all the images and design files and stuff. But I will have a repository in the description that will have the images and stuff that we need. All right, so it's going to look like this. Have I think this is a a, a great example to use CSS grid with because we can use the we can span columns and rows and all that. All right, so what I've done here is I've put all the the other files that we've already created, the the grid.html and all that into a folder called sandbox, and then I have a new folder called project with an empty index.html and style.css, and then I just have the images of like the people and I have an SVG for um this this quote right here. And you can get this again from the front end mentor website or from my repository. So let's go ahead and jump into our HTML first and I'm just going to make this a little wider since HTML takes up more room. And let's go ahead and add our boilerplate and we'll just say testimonials for the title and let's link in our style sheet style.css and the way I'm going to do this is have a testimonials class and that's going to be our grid container and then inside that we're going to have a bunch of cards. So first one will be a div. Let's give it a class of card and I'm also going to give it a class of card dash dash BG. Oops, card dash dash BG dash purple. Because if you look at the project here, this one has the purple background, so we need to add a little bit of styling and I'm using the BEM CSS syntax or the BEM syntax, uh, which I've been really liking lately. 
So inside the card, we're going to have a header and let's give that a class of card double underscore header. And inside that we'll have the image and we want images slash and this one is Daniel. I'm probably just going to type this card out and then I'll paste the rest of the rest of them in and you can just grab it from the uh, repo if you want. So let's add a class here of let's say card double underscore image. And then underneath that we're going to have a div and that's going to have the H3 with the name. So Daniel Clifford and then a paragraph with let's say verified graduate. And we'll use Flexbox to align like this here. This are the stuff here. All right. So underneath the header, let's see, we have some more text. So basically we have the large text or the lead text and then the quote, which is a smaller text. So under header, we'll have a, let's do a paragraph class of card underscore double underscore lead. And I'll get the I'll get the actual text in a second, but then we're going to have a class of card quote. Okay, and then I'm just going to grab those pieces of text. And if you just want to put dummy text, you can of course do that as well. And we'll save that. Okay, so we have our first card which looks absolutely horrendous, but we'll fix that in a little bit. So for the rest of this, let me just grab um I'm going to grab the rest of the cards and just paste them in because there's no sense in typing them out. They're all the exact same except for the content. All the classes and all that are all the same. So we want to go still within testimonials, but after this first div with the card we'll paste those in and now you can see we have all of the um, all of the cards and then I'm just going to add a footer just to give credit to front end mentor for this for this project they're not sponsoring this video or anything but uh, yeah let's say footer and say h3 we'll just say project you don't have to do this but I'm going to say project from and then we'll put a link in here Let me just grab the link. So this is the link to the actual challenge. And in here we'll just say front end uh, front end mentor. All right, cool. So now we go into our styling and we can make this a little smaller now since CSS doesn't usually take as much room. And I'm going to just paste in just a little bit of, of styling here. We're importing the Barlow semi condensed font and a reset and then just setting uh, some background color and so on. And the text is pretty small for this project. There is a, a style guide when you download the resources from front end mentor if you want to check that out. So I think first we should style everything but the grid just to get these these cards looking good. and then we can go ahead and add all the grid properties. So we'll start with with the testimonials container. So let's at least add like our max width which is going to be 1440 pixels going by the style guide and then let's do margin, we'll say 100 pixels top and bottom and auto. Okay, and then this is where obviously we're going to have display grid and all that, but we won't do that just yet. And I know what we're doing for the next 10 minutes or so uh, isn't has nothing to do with the grid, but it's part of the project. So I like to do things from start to finish and not just, you know, paste things in. So um, you might learn some other stuff along the way. So let's grab the class of card because we know that that that's on all of these. And we're going to add a uh, background. So the initial background color is going to be white. So we'll say white. And then let's give it a border radius. We'll do 10 pixels. Uh, whoops, 10 pixels. And then I'm going to add some padding, 30 pixels of padding. And we're going to have a box shadow. So I'm going to just paste that in. So I have to type that out. And if you want to change any of this stuff, um, obviously you can. And just for now, I'm going to add a margin dash bottom to the cards just to separate them a bit. but we can get rid of that after. Okay, so the the header which is the image and then the div that has these two uh pieces of text in it, 
I want to use Flexbox on that to align. Okay, and that's what I was talking about when we started the video and I said where, you know, where I use the grid and where I use Flexbox. So, I'm going to display that as flex and it's going to put the text right next to the image into a row. Let's use a line items center to align vertically and let's add margin dash bottom 10 pixels. Okay, and then let's grab the card header H3, which is the the name, and we'll go ahead and just set that font size to 15 pixels. And let's see, we'll just grab this and whoops. Just grab that and bring that down and I want to do the paragraph in the card header, which is that verified was it verified graduate. And that's going to be a little lighter, so we're going to do opacity and set that to 50%. Okay, and then for the for the image that has a class of card double underscore IMG. And we're going to set the width, let's say width of that to 40 pixels. And then we also want the height to be 40 pixels and let's make it rounded. So set the border radius to let's do uh, 50%. Okay, and then we want like a light purple border. So say two pixels solid and the color for that is going to be 996 ED9. All right, so now we have the border and then let's just add some margin right to push the text over. So we'll do 10 pixels. All right, so that's our header. Now for the text, we have lead. This is the lead and then this is the quote. So let's grab the we'll say card double underscore lead. And for that, we're going to do a font, let's say font size of we'll do we'll use rem units here, 1.5 rem because it's going to be quite large. And then the font dash weight is going to be 500. And let's change. Let's add the line height for that, which will be 1.3. And then the margin actually. No. Yeah, let's do margin bottom 20 pixels. Okay. and then for the quote, I'll just copy this. So remember we have the card underscore quote and the font size for that is going to be 15 pixels. So really small and then font weights the same um, line height will do 1.4 and then we're also going to make this lighter with opacity 70%. That's actually in the style guide as well. Now we want to because these look pretty good now. So we want to work on the, the different colors. So the different styles or variations. So we have the purple. Remember, the first one is this card BG purple, and then we also have two others. This one here, card BG gray blue and card BG black blue. Okay, so here this is the gray blue. That's the black blue and the purple. So let's take care of those. So say BG purple and for this set the background. And the background is going to be HSL. So that's taken from the style guide as well from front end mentor. Let's do 263, 55% and then 52. Is it 50? Yeah, 52%. So that's our background. And then, of course, we want to lighten the text. And then this one actually has a background image of the quotes. So let's say URL and we want to go, let's see. Just dot is it? Where is it? Yeah, so I'm in style CSS, so we just want to go into images. If you used a CSS folder, then you want to going to want to do dot dot slash. Let's do dot slash images slash. And yeah, we want that. Okay, so <laughs> that doesn't look good. Let's do a background repeat and set that to no repeat. And then let's do background position. So I'm going to do top. Uh, we'll do top. Yeah, I guess we'll do top 10 pixels and right. Yeah, that looks good. 
All right, now the other ones here. So let's just grab that and then we don't need the the image for the other ones. So the color for this is going to be BG black. Oh, let's do BG gray. Yeah, gray blue. And the HSL value for that is going to be 2 17 19% and then 35%. All right, and then we'll just grab that and bring that down. And this one's going to be called BG black blue and the HSL for this is 219 and then 29% and then 14%, which is this one here. All right, so I think that's just about it. Oh, the footer down here. I do want to just center that. So I'm just going to say footer and let's text align that to the center. All right. So now for the grid. So we know that we have the testimonials up here. That's going to be our grid container. So let's go ahead and display grid. And then we know we have we're going to need four across and then you see only three items. But remember, this one is spanning. It's spanning across two lines, right? So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. But it's going to be uh, it's going to be five lines, but the tracks, it'll have uh, four tracks. So let's do grid dash template columns. And we're going to repeat and say repeat four times one FR. So let's take a look at that. All right. So we have four going across. We'll make this a little wider here. Now, this one we want to span from actually let's let's open up the, the grid tools. So I'm going to just click that. All right. So now we can kind of see what's going on a little better. So we want this one to go from one to three. So what we can do is go down here to the bottom and let's say dot card and we want nth of type and we want the first one. So if you want to pause the video and try to do this yourself, I would recommend that. Uh, of course, you know, you don't have to, but I would suggest it. But let's do column grid column. So one, two, three. All right, cool. So now that goes from one to three. Now I do want to add gap as well. So let's go up top here and where we have our display grid. We're going to add gap and let's do 30 pixels to split those up. And then I want to do. The fourth one, Patrick. We want to go from here. So Patrick will have grid column. This is going to be two, right? So one, two and then three and then four. So we want him to go from two to four as far as the column goes. And we want him to go from two to three as far as the row goes. Okay, so let's we'll just grab that. And that's going to be four. That's the Patrick, the, the dark background here. So like I said, grid column is going to be two. We want it to go two to four and then grid row. We want to be from two. So it's going to be two to three like that. All right. So he's going from two to three as far as the row goes. Now, since it's it's just the next one, like two to three, we can we can do this, but we can also just say grid row two. All right. So now, yeah, we have Patrick in the right place. And then the last thing we want is for Jeanette to go all the way down. Okay. So let's uh, grab this and Jeanette is five. Item five. So grid column is going to go from four, four to five, right? So this is one, two, three, four, five. We want to go from four to five. So grid column. And since it's just four to five, we can just do four. And then as far as the row goes, 
which is this way. We want her to go from one to three. So grid row is going to be one, three. Save that and there we go. So if we stretch this out a little bit, it should look very similar to that. Awesome. Now, the last thing I want this to do is stack on small screens, because if we make this really small, then, you know, that obviously doesn't look good. So let's let's do that. Let's add a media query. So we'll say uh, I'll just do 768. So at media max with 768 pixels uh, and then for testimonials, which is the container, we'll set the grid template columns just to one FR. Now, that's not going to be enough because we have the spans going on. So basically, when you when you want to stack them and you're doing this kind of thing, you have to reset them. All right. So let's go. Um, let's set this to with 100 percent. All right. And then I'm just going to copy these three. And then we just need to reset and, and let it know where we want these to go on smaller screens. So for the the first one, that's pretty easy. We just want it to be at one. I should probably show the numbers here. For some reason, they just disappear sometimes. All right. So we want this one to just as far as the column goes. So this way, just one to two instead of one to three. So here we could do one slash two or we can just do one. Okay, so now, yeah, you can see that goes to one to two. Now for four, which is Patrick, who is way down here, we want as far as the column goes to be one. Okay, so column is going to be one. And then for the row, he's the fourth one. So let's set the row going from four to five, right? Or just four. And then for the fifth one, Grid column again is going to be one because it's just one column. So they're all going to be one to two. And then instead of going from one to three, as far as the row goes, she's the fifth one. So she's going to go from fifth to six or just five. Okay, so now, yeah, we have Daniel. So he's going one to two, one to two. Jonathan's going two to three, one to two. Jeanette is one to two, three to four. Patrick is one to two, four to five. And Kira is one to two, five to six. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. And it can be a little frustrating to, you know, figure out for, for media queries to figure out where you need to reset them so that they're in the right spot, you know, like unless it doesn't matter the, you know, where they fall, because you could set five, which is Kira to like one and now she's at the top, all right? Which is actually kind of cool that you can switch around the order as well and not touch the HTML, but uh, but yeah, so I think that that looks pretty good. Let's shut this grid uh, grid thing off. All right, and yeah, so once we get to 768, we get our layout. Cool, so I, I really hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something from it and have some, you know, some foundational knowledge in CSS Grid. It's probably going to take more than just this one video for you to be comfortable with it. So I would suggest looking for some more uh, project based tutorials where where you can use the grid. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it, especially if you watch the whole video. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time.